Hello and welcome to the JW Thoughts channel. My name is Wally and today I'd like to introduce you to a new series of videos that I'm going to be releasing over the course of about the next week or so. And that is 100 years of Watchtower or 100 years in the past and what it means now, you silly scallywags. Bit of a long title, but we're working on that one. Uh, what I did is I looked back and started reading the Millions Now Living Will Never Die book by Joseph Rutherford. And I found a lot of interesting things in there that I personally didn't know and I hadn't ever read the book before. So I wanted to try and break uh, up certain sections of those and talk about how Watchtower has changed on certain things and um, how they don't actually acknowledge their past properly and how this information could be very valuable to helping a Jehovah's Witness wake up. Anywho, so we are going to be starting off with a discussion on Zionism. I found it to be quite interesting. These videos will be a little bit shorter. I'm going to try and keep them within 10 to 15 minutes. With all of that being said, don't forget to drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and let's do this thing. All right, let us begin and start down this wild journey. On page 22 of the book, Millions Now Living Will Never Die, it talks about Israel's double. And it kicks things off by mentioning how in uh, Matthew chapter 24, that Jesus spoke about this fig tree that would blossom leaves and sprout up. And when you saw that fig tree, you would know that that would be a sign of uh, the times. So the end basically was, was right around the corner. And they just correlate this to the fig tree being the one and the same or symbolizing the Jewish nation. Then uh, they go and talk about a prophecy in Jeremiah. So let's pick up and just read it directly out of there. Jehovah through Jeremiah, his prophet, foretold to Israel that the climax of their punishment would come when he would drive them out of the land of Palestine into a strange country where they would have to serve others and be oppressed for the same length of time that he had shown them fav shown them his favor. The words of the prophet here being, and then they go on and they quote Jeremiah 16, 13 through 18. Now they get the concept of this, um, it would be the same length of time that he showed them favor as their punishment would be. Uh, they get that by uh, looking at a particular word here. So I'll just read that explanation. Here it is to be seen that God not only foretold driving them out and punishing them, but that he would ultimately bring them back into Palestine, and the length of their punishment would be an exact double or counterpart or duplication of the time during which he had bestowed his favor upon them. First I will recompense their iniquity and their sin double. The word double here means duplication or exact counterpart. If we can get the proper location of these time features, ascertain where the double began, we can very easily determine when God's favor should be due to return to the Jews and what relation that has to the budding of the fig tree as stated above. Then they bring in the prophet Zechariah where it talks about a king riding into the city on an ass, a donkey, and them correlating that to be the specific time of when this times prophecy was going to really kick in. So they were basically saying that, well, we know that Jesus rode into Jerusalem on the donkey and that was about 33 AD. So when was the nation of Israel really established? Well, it would have been during the time of Jacob and that would have been uh, 1,845 years uh, prior to that. So they take the 1,845 years using their biblical uh, calendar between when uh, Jacob had es essentially established the nation of Israel all the way till when Jesus had rode in to Jerusalem on that donkey. So then they say, okay, well, when did the destruction of Jerusalem come? Well, that came 40 years after 33 AD, and it was in 73 AD when the Romans came and completely wiped out Jerusalem. So what they do here is they count from 33 AD, and because it's Israel's double, or like a little mirror situation here, they count from Jesus riding into Jerusalem 
and move forward 1,845 years. So what happened in 1878 that would have been so significant as to give confirmation that this was an end times prophecy? <clears throat> On page 28 of the book, under the subheading, Favor Begins to Return, it says, In the summer of 1878, exactly on time, and when we should look for God's favor to return to the Jew, we find there transpired a certain event of the greatest importance that had happened to Jewry in more than 1800 years. I quote from the Jewish Encyclopedia, which is a recognized authority, uh, and then they go and talk about how there was this, uh, pr the only prime minister of, of Great Britain and how they were Jewish. And once they came into power and through some treaties and stuff, the, the Jewish nation began to be established. We won't go too far into that, but they're just trying to correlate these two things. Uh, later on, it says, from that time on, the favor of the Lord began to be shown again to the Jewish people. According to the parallel, we should expect God's favor to increase towards the Jews from 1878 and should have some specific climax in 1918. So again, they had that 40 years between Jesus writing in and then their actual destruction. So they're like, okay, 1878, significant things. The, the, the wheels are really turning now. And then in 1918 is when the big wapow is going to be. So this fulfillment came when the allied armies came and took possession of uh, Palestine and basically said, okay, now we're going to endorse Zionism and reestablish uh, Jewish people back into their homeland. They quote some old stuff. Again, you can find this book. I'll put a link to it if you want to get a little bit farther into the weeds. This is just going to be your Cliff Notes version. So, uh, what are the what is the conclusion that they come to? Thus, we see that the double was fulfilled exactly on time as God had foretold through the mouth of his prophets. And then as further evidence of the fulfillment of this prophecy, they tie in things found in Isaiah about they will build houses and live in them. They will plant vineyards and they go and the book goes and talks about irrigation systems being planted and how many houses are being uh, uh, build, built in, in Jerusalem and universities starting up. It's really, really fascinating that they take all of these things throughout history and tie it to very specific scriptures. But what is the conclusion that they come to and just how confident was Rutherford in saying that this was biblical? Well, he says, thus the testimony definitely establishes the fact that God's favor has returned to the Jew, that the parallel is fulfilled, that the fig tree is putting forth its leaves according to the promise, all of which Jesus said would take place at the end of the world. So yes, they call this a fact. It is a fulfillment of prophecy in scripture and boom. Now remember, it's important that this is God's channel. If you ask a current Jehovah's Witness and say, hey, was Joseph Rutherford, you know, God's channel of disseminating, disseminating spiritual truths, they would say, absolutely. He might have gotten some things wrong, but, you know, the light gets brighter and there's adjustments to our understanding. So the Let's actually put that to the test then. Is this an adjustment? Do modern day Jehovah's Witnesses still think that this was a very accurate uh, depiction of those verses? Well, I think we pretty much know uh, exactly how this is going to play out, but uh, we'll, uh, we'll hit it with the old razzle-dazzle. If you go to the About Us section on JW.org under Frequently Asked Questions, are Jehovah's Witnesses Zionists? No, they are not. Jehovah's Witnesses are Christians who base their beliefs on the scriptures. While some religions teach that the gathering of Jews in Palestine is related to scriptural prophecy, Jehovah's Witnesses do not hold this view. They do not believe that this political development was specifically foretold in the scriptures. In fact, the scriptures do not promote any one human government or exalt one ethnic group or people over another. The Watchtower, the official magazine of Jehovah's Witnesses, has unequivocally stated there is no scriptural support for political Zionism. Does that sound like new light? Does that sound like an adjustment in your understanding? Or does that sound like something that is fundamentally changed? One time you called it a, a cow, now you're calling it a duck. 
It, it, there was no sort of transformation that was happening here. And the more interesting part to me is they were using those scriptures in order to solidify what? Their end times prophecy and how close the end was. Man, the end Armageddon, it's right around the corner. It's the last of the last of the last of the last days. You guys need to be ready. You need to be on point because the end is nigh. Well, that didn't really happen. So what did they have to do? Well, maybe these scriptures didn't really mean the thing that we thought they meant. But remember, they didn't say that it was maybe or a possibility. They said it's a fact. It is absolutely certain. And the fact that they don't acknowledge these their prior teachings is absolutely hilarious. When they're using language, the Watchtower, the official magazine of Jehovah's Witnesses, unequivocally states that it has no scriptural basis. Well, at one time, the Watchtower said that it absolutely has scriptural basis. And I think, in all fairness and transparency, they should at least acknowledge that, yes, we were once Zionists. We did, at a time in history, teach that these things were all related. Instead, they just try and bury their past and say, no, 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 Jehovah's Witnesses don't teach that. That's those other false religions, those, those crazy, kooky religious scholars of Christendom that are trying to mislead people, not us, God's official channel. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, very first episode of 100 Years of Looking Back at Watchtower Shenanigans Through the Lens of Modern Day History by some guy with a camera on YouTube. YouTube working title still. Anyway, I will see you guys tomorrow as I do plan on releasing these on a daily basis. Maybe I'll miss a day, who knows, but I hope to see you tomorrow at 6 a.m. Pacifical time for the next episode of whatever the hell we're calling this. All right, thank you so much, and I'll see you tomorrow.